again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 12, Part 5, General Skin Pathologies. In the first part, we're going to look at some general terms. Number one is pruritus. P-R-U-R-I-T-U-S. Pruritus is the medical term for itching. And we do need to be careful of the spelling. Notice it ends T-U-S. Oftentimes we have a tendency to misspell it I-S because it sounds like puritis. When we say it, we get lazy. But it's puritus, U-S. The next term should be pretty easy. It's dermatitis, D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S. And again, it has that suffix itis on it. So what is dermatitis going to mean? Well, I hope you got inflammation of the skin. And this would normally include signs such as redness, swelling, and perhaps itching. The next term is contact dermatitis. Contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T. And then dermatitis, D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S. Contact dermatitis is a localized allergic response that's caused by contact with an irritant. And a good example of that would be poison ivy. When you touch the poison ivy, you immediately have an inflammatory response. Next we have dermatosis. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-S-I-S. Dermatosis is a general term for any skin lesions or eruptions that are not associated with inflammation. If there's inflammation going on, we have dermatitis. If we have a skin condition without inflammation, it's dermatosis. Then we have two terms related to redness of the skin, and these are easy to confuse, so we need to be careful of these. The first one is erythroderma, E-R-Y-T-H-R-O-D-E-R-M-A. Notice the word parts. We have erythro, which means red, and the suffix derma, which relates to the skin. So literally this means redness of skin. This is abnormal redness of the entire skin surface. Now we need to distinguish that term from erythema, E-R-Y-T-H-E-M-A. If you remember from the word part, we have the word part erythema, which refers to flushing. Well, erythema is a condition of redness of the skin, but this is due to capillary dilation. The capillaries dilate that makes the skin red. So erythema is a redness that's like flushing. It's where the capillaries have dilated. But I should also clarify, and the textbook really does not make this clear at all, that erythema is the term that's used for really most types of redness of the skin. Most types of redness of the skin are caused by some type of capillary dilation. The erythroderma, however, is a relatively rare condition and we are talking about redness of the entire skin surface literally the whole body is turning red that is usually due to some other type of inflammatory disorder such as exfoliative dermatitis or psoriasis so if we're talking about really a general skin redness we want to use erythema erythroderma is a rare situation Okay, and let's quickly uh, go back and review these six terms. What is the term for itching? Well, that's puritis, P-R-U-R-I-T-U-S. What is the term for any skin lesions or eruptions that's not associated with inflammation? That's dermatosis, D-E-R-M-A-T-O-S-I-S. What is the term for a localized allergic response that's caused by contact with an irritant?
That's the contact dermatitis. C-O-N-T-A-C-T dermatitis, D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S. And what is the term for abnormal redness of the entire skin surface? That's the erythroderma, E-R-Y-T-H-R-O-D-E-R-M-A. And what is the term that refers to inflammation of the skin? Well, that's the dermatitis, D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S. And finally, what is the term for redness of the skin due to capillary dilation, such as if someone's flushing? Well, that's erythema, E-R-Y-T-H-E-M-A. Okay, the next group of pathologies relate to inflammatory conditions. We already know that inflammation of the skin is dermatitis. These are going to be specific types of dermatitis. The first one is exfoliative dermatitis, E-X-F-O-L-I-A-T-I-V-E, and then dermatitis. Exfoliative dermatitis is a condition of widespread scaling, uritis, erythroderma, and hair loss. If we are exfoliating, or something's exfoliative, literally that refers to loss of skin. Next we have eczema, E-C-Z-E-M-A. Eczema is a form of chronic dermatitis. It's caused by an autoimmune reaction, and it's characterized by redness, itching, and dryness. Then we have psoriasis, which we have mentioned before. P-S-O-R-I-A-S-I-S. -S. Psoriasis is also autoimmune related. This is an autoimmune disorder characterized by flare-ups of red papules covered with silvery scales. And then we have urticaria. U-R-T-I-C-A-R-I-A. Urticaria is the medical term for hives, and hives are itchy wheels that can appear on the skin as a result of an allergic reaction. Okay, and the third group we have are related to infections. The first term is pyoderma, P-Y-O-D-E-R-M-A. Notice the word parts, pyo refers to pus, right? and the suffix derma refers to skin. Pyoderma is any acute, inflammatory, pus-forming bacterial skin infection. So any skin infection caused by bacteria where you're going to have pus and inflammation, that's a type of pyoderma. Then we have an example of a pyoderma, and that is impetigo, I-M-P-E-T-I-G-O. Impetigo is a contagious bacterial infection that's characterized by pustules. The next term is cellulitis, C-E-L-L-U-L-I-T-I-S. Cellulitis is an acute, rapidly spreading infection within the connective tissues that's characterized by malaise, warmth, and red streaks. And then we have gangrene, G-A-N-G-R-E-N-E. -E. Gangrene is a form of tissue necrosis that's caused by loss of circulation to affected tissues. We lose circulation to the tissues and the tissues actually begin to die and then an infection sets in. So far we've had infections that are related to bacteria. The remaining infections relate to infections by parasites, or in one case, fungus. First of all, we have tinea, T 
T-I-N-E-A, and tinea is a fungal infection. It's commonly known as ringworm because the fungus spreads out in a circle or ring as it spreads out. It has nothing to do with actual worms, okay? It's just an expression, ringworm. It looks like a ring forms as the fungus spreads. The next term is pediculosis, P-E-D-I-C-U-L-O-S-I-S. This is the medical term for a lice infection. And finally, we have scabies, S-C-A-B-I-E-S. -E scabies is the medical term for an infection by itch mites, and these itch mites can cause small itchy bumps and blisters on the skin. Okay, let's review these terms that we just covered. What is the term for any acute, inflammatory, pus-forming bacterial skin infection? That's pyoderma, P-Y-O-D-E-R-M-A. What is the term for tissue necrosis that's caused by loss of circulation to the affected tissues? That's gangrene. What is the medical term for the fungal infection known as ringworm? Tinea. T-I-N-E-A. What is the medical term for a lice infection? That's pediculosis. P-E-D-I-C-U-L-O-S-I-S. -E -I -I what is the term for an acute, rapidly spreading infection within the connective tissues that's characterized by malaise, warmth, and red streaks. That's cellulitis, C-E-L-L-U-L-I-T-I-S. And what is the medical term for an infection by itch mites? That's scabies. S-C-A-B-I-E-S. -E okay, now we're going to go on and do a comprehensive review of all the terms. What is the general term for redness of the skin? Well, that's erythema, E-R-Y-T-H-E-M. A. Erythema. What is the term for any abnormal skin condition that's not caused by inflammation? That's dermatosis. D-E-R-M-A-T-O-S-I-S. -S. What is the medical term for itching? That's puritus, P-R-U-R-I-T-U-S. An autoimmune disorder characterized by flare-ups of red papules covered by silvery scales is known as what? Psoriasis, P S O R. I-A-S-I-S. -I -I a form of chronic dermatitis caused by an autoimmune response resulting in redness, itchiness, and dryness is known as what? That's eczema. E-C-Z-E-M-A. And what is the term for a localized allergic response 
caused by contact with an irritant. That's contact dermatitis, contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, and then dermatitis, D-E-R-M-A-T-I-T-I-S. And what is the term for abnormal redness of the entire skin surface? That's the erythroderma. E-R-Y-T-H-R-O-D-E-R-M-A. What is the medical term for an infection by itch mites? That's scabies. S-C-A-B-I-E-S. What is the medical term for hives? That's urticaria, U-R-T-I-C-A-R-I-A. What is the medical term for ringworm? That's tinea, T-I-N-E-A. Tissue necrosis caused by a loss of circulation is known as what? That's gangrene. G-A-N-G-R-E-N-E. -E. What is the term for any acute, inflammatory, pus-forming bacterial skin infection? That's pyoderma, P-Y-O-D-E-R-M-A. Okay, and again, what is the term for an acute, rapidly spreading infection within the connective tissues that's characterized by malaise, warmth, and red streaks? That's cellulitis, C E L L. U L I T I S. Okay, that covers what are generally the most tricky general skin pathologies. Again, remember these pathologies have a variety of symptoms. These symptoms can be in the form of the lesions that we've already talked about. In the next and last episode for this chapter, I'll go over some of the procedures with you. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology.